Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time, we've got a head-to-head -head of the Odroid XU4, the ASUS Tinkerboard, and the Raspberry Pi 3. Specifically, I'm going to compare the hardware of these different single-board computers, and then I'll run some comparative benchmark tests. So, here we have our three single-board computers, the Odroid XU4, the ASUS Tinkerboard, and the Raspberry Pi 3. And these are priced at about $35 for the Raspberry Pi 3, about $55 for the Tinkerboard, and about $59 for the Odroid XU4. So basically, these two boards are about the same price, the Raspberry Pi is roughly half the price of the other boards. So we have to ask ourselves, what extra do you get for your extra investment in these two boards? So, let's start out thinking about the system on the chip on the board, so the thing behind the computer. On the Raspberry Pi 3, we've got a Broadcom BCM2837 quad-core system on the chip with four ARM Cortex-A53 cores running at up to 1.2 GHz. Meanwhile, on the Tinkerboard, we've got a Rock chip RK3288, again quad-core system on the chip, with four 1.8 GHz ARM Cortex-A17 cores, so significantly more power on the Tinkerboard than the Raspberry Pi 3. But then when we move up to the Odroid XU4, we've got a Samsung Exynos 5422 octa-core system on the chip. So here we've got four 2 GHz ARM Cortex-A15 cores and four 1.6 GHz ARM Cortex-A7 cores. So a lot more processing power on the Odroid XU4 compared to the other boards here. How that will translate to actual practical performance we'll see in the benchmarks a bit later in the video. In terms of graphics, all of these have got a GPU on the system on the chip. On the Raspberry Pi 3, it's a Broadcom Video Core 4. On the Tinkerboard, it's an ARM Mali T760. On the Odroid, it's an ARM Mali T628. But the key issue here is whilst all of these boards have got a full-size HDMI socket, you can see them there, there, and there, on the Raspberry Pi 3 and on the Odroid XU4, they can output up to 1080p, Whereas on the Tinkerboard, it can output up to 2160p UHD, what we tend to call 4K these days. So if you want that higher video resolution, you have to go for the Tinkerboard. In terms of memory, the Raspberry Pi 3 has got one gigabyte of DDR2 memory, whereas the Tinkerboard and the Odroid have got two gigabytes of DDR3 memory. So this gives you a basic idea of the power of these boards. So, having considered processor power, graphics power, and RAM, let's reflect a little bit on connectivity. On the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Tinkerboard, you've got, as you can probably see, four USB 2 ports. Whereas on the Odroid, you've got one USB 2 port and two USB 3 ports. It's great to have the USB 3 on a single board computer, but you have got one less port. And this is significant in the context of other connectivity. All of these boards have got an Ethernet socket here, here, and here. And on the Raspberry Pi 3, it's 100 megabit Ethernet. On the Tinkerboard and the Odroid, it is 1 gigabit Ethernet. And that's clearly very good. But you may well want wireless connectivity. And on the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Tinkerboard, you've got onboard Wi Fi, onboard Bluetooth. Whereas on the Odroid, you haven't got any onboard wireless connectivity. So if you want to connect by Wi-Fi, for example, you'll have to add a dongle, and that will take up a USB port. So you bend down to two available USB ports on here using Wi-Fi, where you still have four on the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Tinkerboard. And that is significant. Say, for example, you, you connected up a separate keyboard and mouse um, to, to all of these boards, you'd have two free ports on these, and you wouldn't have any free ports left on the Odroid. Now, of course, you might say, well, we'll connect a combined mouse and, and keyboard device, and you might be connecting headlessly. That is certainly true. But I certainly think having three ports and no onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is a, is a mark against the Odroid XU4. Another thing we should talk about here is how these things boot up, or how they actually store their operating system. And on the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Tinkerboard, they use a microSD card. You can see it down here. On the Odroid XU4, you can use a microSD card. It connects in here, but you can also use eMMC. And here we've got an eMMC module connected to the back of the Odroid XU4. And eMMC memory is a lot faster than a microSD card. So this should give a big advantage to the Odroid XU4 in certain times of performance tests, as we'll see a bit later on. 
and you can flick on this board between booting from EMC or, or the SD card using a little switch, which is just here. You flick this switch for booting from one or the other. So, those are our boards. It's now high time to run some tests, and the final thing I want to say, therefore, is I'm going to use on each board its native Linux operating system. They aren't going to be running the same operating system in these tests. I know that will annoy some of you here. But I'm going to be running the operating system the manufacturers most expect us to run. So on the Raspberry Pi 3, it's going to be Raspbian. On the Tinker board, it'll be Tinker OS. On the uh, Odroid XU4, it's going to be Ubuntu Mate. And I should say that on the Odroid XU4, I'll be booting the operating system from the eMMC card, as you may guess. Whereas on the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Tinker board, I'll be using a micro SD card. I have to use a micro SD card. This will be a SanDisk Ultra Class 10 micro SD card. So, here I am running Ubuntu Mate on the Odroid XU4, and I've also got the Tinker board running with its Tinker OS 2.0.3, and the Raspberry Pi running Raspbian. But let's go back to the Odroid XU4, and uh, I'll just bring up the system monitor because I just want to have this in view so we can see the different CPU cores, what they're doing in a second. Because the first test I'm going to do is to use Sysbench to stress out the processor on each machine and see what kind of a performance they can show. Now, Sysbench you can install on your system by going sudo apt-get install Sysbench. I've obviously done that on all these systems. And then you run this command here to test the CPU, Sysbench test CPU and then it's going to hit a factor prime numbers up to a value of 10,000 max, and we're going to run it with a certain number of threads. Now, the Odroid XU4 has got eight cores, so here the number of threads is going to be eight, whereas on the uh, Tinkerboard and the Pi it'll be four, because they've got four cores. But I'm just going to run this first of all, just as a test to show you how it works. It'll start doing something, and I want to flick over to the system monitor to show you it's going to be stressing out all the cores. You can see all the cores here are at 100% utilization. I just wanted to note that because a few people had said to me after my last Odroid XU4 video, does it use all eight cores together or does it use the four slower cores and then the four faster cores as it will in certain Android implementations. But I hope I've proved to you there it'll be using all eight cores. Anyway, that's not a fair test of course because now I've done that I've uh, ended up having something else running alongside Syspen so it might corrupt the results. So I'm just going to clear that off make it nice and neat and we'll run it again. This will be our actual result. Let's actually watch it properly this time. So it's stressing out the uh, CPU. The little fan is going wild, as it will do as it gets quite hot running this. And the result of Sysbench is going to come up in a second. Oh, the suspense is killing us, isn't it? And it's going to be, there we are, 15.1794 seconds. 15.1 eight seconds, I think we'll, we'll call that. So that's the score for the Odroid XU4. Let's flick across to the Tinkerboard and bring it up there and start that. And I think also speed forward in time a little bit. And there we are, the same test is 26.7319 seconds, 26.73 seconds on the Tinkerboard. So significantly longer than it took on the Odroid XU4. Now, of course, we'll go across to the Raspberry Pi 3, and here we've got it set up, we'll run it again, and again, we'll speed her forward in time, because this will take quite a long while, I think. And there we are, by the magic of filmmaking we've got there, we've got 45.7479, 45.75 seconds, so again, significantly longer. So if we chuck all those up on the initial chart, you can see very clearly, as we would expect from the processor cores and the speed of those cores, that the Odroid XU4 significantly outperforms both the Tinkerboard and also the Raspberry Pi 3. So, I'm now going to run a couple of tests using the GIMP image editor. And first of all, I'm just going to launch GIMP. It's quite a large package to launch, so this is a test really of processor power that loads in its plugins, and of course of storage speed. So I'm here on the Odroid XU4, but if I zoom down this desktop so we can see all three desktops together, I will then hit the button at exactly the same time to launch the program. And uh, there they go. And all oh, the uh, Pi 3 came up first, the Tinkerboard next. What's happening with the Odroid? It was hit at exactly the same moment. White screen there, uh, it's coming up, but uh, uh, the Tinkerboard has won. The Pi 3 is second. The Odroid is still getting there. This is quite a surprising result, isn't it? Odroid, when's it going to finish? 19.9 seconds compared to 9.8 for the Tinkerboard and 11.2 for the Pi 3. 
And I should say this is not the first time I've run this test. I've run it several times. The result is, is consistent. The Odroid launches GIMP significantly slower than the Tinkerboard or the Pi 3. And um, I guess the real thing this shows is, is the power of software. I've uh, heard recently that the latest version of Tinker OS 2.0.3 running here on the Tinkerboard is a vast improvement, and this test tends to support that. I have to admit that running Ubuntu Mate on the Odroid XU4 does feel a bit laggy on occasions, and this test really seems to confirm that. Right, here we are back with GIMP for a second time, and this time I'm going to apply a filter to a large image, a 3000 by 2000 pixel image. So again here we're starting out on the Odroid XU4, and I'll go to the menu here, I'm going to go to Filters, and to uh, Edge Detect, and to Neon, and we'll use the default settings here, and then we'll apply this filter. But once again, we'll zoom things down so we can see all three screens together, and then we'll hit the button exactly the same time, and again see what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen this time. Very exciting, Oh, Tinkerboard has won 6.3 seconds, and then it's gonna be, um, what well, Odroid comes second, Raspberry Pi third, but only by 0.1 seconds, again, this seems to confirm the result we saw in the, in the previous test. The Odroid should be a lot faster, but regardless of that, the Tinker Board has won. Now, as we're on YouTube, I thought I should test a playback of 1080p footage on YouTube. I'm going to do that in Chromium on each of the machines. So we're starting it here again on the Odroid XU4, and uh, we'll uh, just make this up to a full screen and then we can just check we're in the 1080p, I'm sure we are. Yes, that's 1080p, and I will now play this file. And a uh, little stutter there at the start, but maybe it's just settling down. Seems to be working pretty good. That's pretty good playback. It doesn't seem to be missing frames. The, uh, it may change, oh, that was a little jump. This may be different when you see it. It's been encoded again by the time you see it. Let's compare this to the Tinkerboard. Tinkerboard here is playing very well indeed. Remember, the Tinkerboard will play potentially up to 4K, so it certainly should play a 1080p fine, and it clearly is. And if we compare that to the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi is not quite as good as the Tinkerboard. I think the result here is that all of these boards will play 1080p YouTube footage, but the Tinkerboard will play it best. Now, I thought we'd finish off with a final graphics test, and here I am back on the Tinkerboard, for reasons will be clear in a second. I'm going to go to fishgl.com, which is an online fish tank with 3D fish, which I thought would be a nice way of testing out the uh, 3D performance of these boards, just to see what they can do. And what happens is when you go into this package, it loads it in, and then you can go into a menu then, you can see a frame rate, and uh, once the thing has settled down to zoom in onto the actual fish tank itself, lovely sight to play with this, you can see a pretty consistent frame rate about a, I think it's about 12 or 13 frames a second here on the Tinkerboard. So I thought I'll run this also on the uh, Raspberry Pi 3 and also on the Odroid XU4. But the problem is, if I run it on the Odroid XU4, we get no further than this. It won't actually show us the fish tank and everything else, so it just doesn't work more than that. And on the Raspberry Pi, there's even less. We just get it looking like this. So sadly, this isn't a good test at all, but I just thought I'd show it you because I like Let's come back again to the uh, uh, Tinkerboard. I just like this particular uh, website, this application. It's great to play with. I think all we've proved here really is that the Tinkerboard has the best graphics capabilities of these three boards. So there we are, and as I hope you'll agree, some very interesting test results. Absolutely, as the Sysbench test showed, the Odroid XU4 is the most powerful single-board computer on test here in this video. Its price-performance ratio is clearly going to be higher than the Raspberry Pi 3 or the ASUS Tinkerboard. Having said that, the graphical capabilities of the Tinkerboard clearly come to their own in some of the tests we've seen, and of course it can play 4K video. And the Raspberry Pi 3 comes through very well indeed in terms of real-world application and tests because of its very mature software, it clearly does very well. So whether you want an ASUS Tinkerboard, a Raspberry Pi 3, or an Odroid XU4 has to depend on as much the software you're running, the operating system you're running, as comparing the hardware. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.